Hello there guys, glad to see you watching another video of mine. Welcome back to the Pride. And in today's video, you know, with our upcoming transfer ban or possible transfer ban, I figured that I go over some possible loanees, loanees that or youth players that can possibly come back and rejuvenize our team for next season. Starting off with a player that many rate as the next Frank Lampard. You probably already know him. He just recently scored a hat trick in a few weeks ago. Mason Mount. 10 goals, 4 assists, 76 pass percentage, 59 touches per game. Now, let, now let's stress on that 59 touches per game piece. 59 touches a game tells me that this player is clearly comfortable on the ball. Clearly, you can play through him in, in the offense. You can run the offense through him. He can, he's able to link up play quite well. And as you can see from these clips here, you know, it's different variations to his game where, where you know, if he were to come into our midfield, how he can impact us very well. Not only is he graceful on the ball, but he has an eye for goal as well. He can he can finish with his left and his right. And it's no coincidence or, or no surprise that Lampard rates this player quite highly because he plays very similar to how Frank Lampard used to play for us, right? Not only is he great at set pieces at creating chances, not only is he great at creating set pieces and creating goals for his goal scoring opportunities for his teammates, but he can also he can also finish plays as well. Now I want to stress on that we haven't had a midfielder similar to, to Mason Mount like since Juan Mata or Oscar, right? Now Juan Mata was a player that you can he was great at set pieces to create chances from set pieces. He was a he was a, a guy that we can play link up play quite well with. He was graceful on the ball, a nice little flair to his game. But really what I want to stress upon is how fluid his game is. Because, like I said, other than, you know, just, just imagine this. A midfield three with Kante, Loftus Cheek, and Mason Mount. Now, if you were to, if, let's say hypothetically, Mercia Sarri were to leave, that would, that would put Jorginho in a very precarious spot because, like I said, He's a he's a he's a specialist that only specializes in, in playing the regista role. And a regista is simply a player that helps link the defense to the attack. And I don't think, you know, I don't think that as far as variations of the game, I think Mason Mount offers a whole lot more or potentially could offer a whole lot more to us to our team than Jorginho. Because Jorginho, too many times in the game, I see him make sideways passes, backwards passes. He almost seemed a, seemed a bit nervous and quick to get rid of the ball. But with Mason Mount, like I said, with the 59 touches per game, he clearly is comfortable on the ball and able to make decisions. Now, let's say, for example, Mauricio Sarri were to leave. That, that will put his spot in jeopardy because, like I said, he's, he's a specialist. And, you know, he only offers that. So... With Mason Mount coming into the team, you can. He, I've seen games where he's played the the, the center attacking mid, the, the, the attacking mid, or more of a number eight role. He's comfortable anywhere on the pitch in the in the midfield area. He is comfortable in any role that you give him on the team. So, you know, in my opinion, he kind of if you want a more of a modern day player to to compare him pair him with, I think he reminds me of a young Kevin De Bruyne. As far as his ability to not only finish left foot, right foot, but his passing range and passing ability, he can pass and cross with his left or right foot. He can, like I said, he can finish as well. And and you can play the offense, run the offense through him. You can he links up play very well with his teammates. So yeah, I would rate him. He's probably one of the most. He has the most potential out of all these players that I'm going to list. Simply because he reminds me so much of Lampard and kind of Kevin De Bruyne-ish. He has Kevin De Bruyne-esque vibes to him. Now, also on my list is the main man. The guy that is going to be the new talisman for Chelsea FC next season. Tammy Abraham. Tammy Abraham is amongst only two players. To, there's only two players in the championship that have 25 or more goals. And that's Tammy Abraham. And another striker, a player I'm not, I'm unaware of, but I know it's only him and another person that has 25 goals. Now, 
for the second consecutive season, Tammy Abraham has, has scored 25 goals or more. Now, let's go beyond the 25 goals or more. This guy shot accuracy is 68%, right? So clearly, clearly he's a he's a striker that that's very clinical. And just imagine if Morata had 68% shot accuracy. He would have at least 10 more goals for Chelsea. Because so many times you see him in a game where he either shoots it straight towards the keeper or he's, he just completely misses it and skies it. Unless he's with his head and he might score then, you know. But not only does he, does he show that he's levels above the championship, him being, the, being an announced in the team of the year. So congratulations. Not only, not only does, has he shown that he's levels above the championship with him being announced or being featured in the team of the year, championship team of the year. So congratulations, Tam Abraham. You earned it. And I hope you can come back. And with reports of him possibly being sold to other teams, I hope this is rubbish. I hope this is nothing but straight garbage. But I've been hearing reports that uh, teams are bidding for him, and Chelsea are, are looking into maybe accepting the bids. It's like I seen one that was like twenty million from possibly uh, Spurs or or uh, Aston Villa wanted him on a permanent basis. I've seen lots of this. Now, clearly, Tammy Abraham is a player that can that's that's deserving of a of a opportunity to instantly come into the team with Iguain possibly more than likely not extending his loan spill at Chelsea and with Giroud on his way out with him being the age with him being 33 years of age 32 years of age now I've been hearing reports that uh, Chelsea are going to extend his one year deal that's in his contract but it's still he, he could still a possibility that he can be sold but even if even if that's the case you know we need to invest, really invest in youth and, and think about the future because right now we don't have a striker for the next 5 10 years and I think that Tammy Abraham is is more than enough to fill in that void that we have, and you may think of Bashawai as well. But I've looked at Bashawai, and I'm sorry, I don't think that he's ready for the top level. You know, he's played in three different teams in, in two different leagues. He's played in the Spanish league, top division. He's played in in the, at Crystal Palace, and we we seen him at Chelsea. Now I thought with Chelsea we just didn't suit his style of play because he's more of a goal poacher, but with Three different teams, you know, it's similar results. He's not consistent enough. To, he's not goals. He doesn't score enough goals, consist more consistently, if you ask me. So I think Tammy Abraham, you know, he's shown that he's consistent. He's shown that he's ready for the big time. With he's with him constantly scoring 25 goals or more. And at Chelsea right now, we can use a player that can consistently give us 20 to 25 goals a season. You know, so imagine imagine him, Hudson Odoi, lost his cheek. Mason Mount, Kante, just that's a strong backbone for the future next five to ten years, right? But next on my list is the main man, the man that's going to possibly replace Asper Laqueta, Reese James, on loan from Wigan. On loan from Wigan. Now, Reese James. He has 61% aerial duels won, 58% tackles won, and he averages less than one foul committed per game. Now, how many times have you seen this season that Aspen Laquita will either get burnt or beat by a defender, right? Because his legs are gone, his legs are shot. I'm sorry, he's he's up there age. And everything that he's done for us, I'm very appreciative. You know, he's played a lot of games for us since he's joined Chelsea. And let's just face it, you know, he gets beat every time on the wing. And... Imagine, imagine Reese James, a player that's more of a of a, of a more of a modern day fullback who can not only bomb forward and beat a player, but he can also cross the ball quite well. And and clearly, you know, he can he can also he can go forward, bomb forward, and, and track back without you know it being too much on his legs. Whether he was a young player, youth player, and how many times have we seen you know Aspie Quick to get beat on that right hand side? And maybe a, a defender like Rudiger, who's extremely aggressive alongside Aspie Laqueta, who both players, both defenders like playing their 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 defenders, or both players like to play their attackers close, or the people that they're defending against very close and tight, which leaves them vulnerable in behind. And with a defender like Rudiger, who's extremely aggressive, 
and constantly having to cover for both himself and Aspil Equator, it leaves him out of position, and that, that would explain why sometimes there's big gaps in our defense and we're susceptible to, you know, headers and set pieces because of, of little things like that. Now, now Reese James is not the only defender or possible fullback that can come back and replace our 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 fullback and defending situation, right? Olaina is the next on my list. Now look at these stats. I'm gonna I'm gonna read some some very, very impressive stats. Olaina, he has sixty seven percent tackles won, fifty four percent aerial duels won, and seventy seven percent pass percentage, right? With a twenty five percent crossing accuracy. Now if you, you might look at that stat and say, okay, that's every four crosses that he is, uh, is on target. But really, think about how many times have you seen Aspel Equator or Hell, even even Anzo, right? Constantly crossing shit balls <laughs> into the in the area, right? Sometimes he either skies it or he doesn't even beat the first defender. You never, there's no gray area when it comes to Marcus Alonso, right? So, you know, just imagine having those two fullbacks on your on your as your number one guys right that's that just creates slow much fluidity in our in our attack right because not only can they defend very well they show that they can tackle quite well and you know not only can they tackle right and make challenges but they can also bump forward beat a defender beat the first man on the cross and possibly, you know, with a striker like Tammy Abraham and definitely Olivier Giroud can head those balls in. I'm sick and tired of these low crosses, these low drill crosses in the box when you have Olivier Giroud who's constantly making runs in between defenders and never receives a proper cross, right? So, I'm up for it. But next on my list is a player that's that's played in the Premier League year in, right? He's 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 showing that he's ready for, for a, cha a chance, right? Especially with our, our left-hand side problems. Now he's a very versatile player. The player I'm about to I'm about to list. He's not a youth player, but he's a young player. And it's Bobby Kennedy, Robert Kennedy, right? From on loan from Newcastle United. By the way, before I get into this, but before I get into this thing, our youth players have U19 players have just re, just beat Barcelona in the in the semifinal of the Champions League, right? So congratulations for the third time, right? We have a chance to win the the, the final in a third time, guys. Our youth academy is is second to none. We are the best youth academy in the world. No Ajax, maybe because they develop the players more, they give them opportunity to play. But as far as building stars, we produce Kevin De Bruyne, Mason Mount, Loftus Cheek. Do do I need to say more? Anyways, this is about Kennedy, right? Bobby Kennedy, Robert Kennedy, or just straight Kennedy. 73% tackles, 35% area duels, maybe because sometimes, you know, he does not he's not really a defender. Sometimes he plays the left mid position, but recently he's been playing and as as a left back. But that 73% tackle percentage just shows me that he's extremely pro pro proficient at winning ta challenges and winning tackles and he doesn't average many fouls per game. He only averages one foul per game. So Clearly, guys, clearly, he one number one thing, number one problem with our defense, right? We allow too many crosses into the ball, and we just get beat because we're not tall enough, right? But if we can prevent crosses coming in altogether, because you know, imagine how efficient Ashley Cole was with his tackling, right? So many balls, so many crosses being blocked, not coming into the defense at all. That's the one way to stop the game getting beat by the aerial ball, right? The air ball, the the crosses, right? Preventing them from coming into the into your box in the first place it takes a lot of pressure off your off your center halves. If you're a fullback, so constantly being in the right position, constantly preventing challenges from going inside. So yeah, I'm 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 upbeat about that. And also going forward, he's very very. As you can see, he has an eye for a goal. He can score as well. He he does more than just score goals, Marcus Alonso. He's great at 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 linking up the play. And yeah. Very refreshing to have Emerson Allen and Kennedy as an option on the left hand side. Now my next my next player I'm gonna introduce is the big boss man, Ruben Loftus Cheek. Now guys, I'm gonna go straight to the point, right? A goes forces. I got that out the way. 
91% passing percentage. That is extremely efficient, especially the amount of games that he's played this season. Over 30 games, he's at the back injury, but he's featured enough to know that that's, that's fantastic. He's averaging 78 touches per game. 78 touches per game. That is otherworldly, right? That's a lot of touches on the ball. A lot of a lot of the, a lot of the balls go go through him, right? A lot of the play goes through him on that left hand side. Him, Eddie Hazard. They have a great, great chemistry, right? They link up the play quite well, and it's no, it's no, uh, it's no big surprise that Eddie Hazard is allowed to be more. He has had more shots on goal with Loftus Cheek and Emerson on that left hand side because guess why? Emerson constantly makes that overlapping run, which allows Eddie Hazard to cut inside. And score goals. Lost his cheek, always supporting him, make sure that he has a back pass offering himself. So just in case, you know, they try to double in on Eden Hazard, he has a free pass to, to kind of link up to play with play one two touch passes and open up plays for him, right? So yes, Lost his cheek is the best number eight we have right now. And imagine a midfield again. Imagine him alongside Mason Mount and Golo Kante. And himself, right? That's a that's a solid foundation, right? That's probably the strongest midfield we've had since Essen and Lampard, since Mikhail and Lampard. So I'm I'm very excited. I'm I'm kind of hoping slightly that this transfer ban stays in place because we have so much talent. I'm not even going to talk about Kurt Zuma in my in my in my review, right? Even though he's one of the defenders that we can bring back instantly start for us. He's having a fantastic season at Everton. Rock solid. It's glad to see that he's recovered from that knee injury, that nasty injury that he suffered for at Manchester United. Very unfortunate, but he seems like he's coming back into the Kurt Zuma that we once loved, right? Great at tackling. I guess I am talking about uh, Kurt Zuma a little bit because I didn't have him down, but I realized I didn't have him down. But Kurt Zuma, right? Excellent tackling, excellent aerial defense. He will help us out tremendously on the set pieces because he's an ox, right? A fucking ox. Excuse my language. I'm not getting monetized for this video, so I guess I can curse a little bit more, right? Anyways, for the main man, I hope he recovers pretty soon. He has a, he had a serious injury, guys. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's the main man, Cho, the head honcho, Colum Hudson Adoy. Five goals, five assists, 88 percent passing percentage. 88 percent. Passing percentage, right? And not only that, guys, he averages 36% crossing accuracy. That's every three crosses, right? Every three crosses is on target. And with a striker like Olivier Drew, like a Tammy Abraham, who's great at finishing, great at creating spaces and chances for himself with his movement off the ball. Guys, I'm telling you, man, we have so much potential, man. I'm not even worried about it. I think we have more potential than Manchester United, Arsenal, and even Spurs, even though Spurs are a little bit better than us as far as their, knowing their identity and who they want to be, right? But they're still not better than us because, you know, our, 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 our team produces trophies, you feel me? We don't just go to semifinals and finals and lose. We actually win trophies. Anyways, that's another, another topic, right? Guys, 50 completed dribbles all season, right? That's my, that might seem like a little bit to you guys, but that's a whole lot more than William and Pedro, who've been who shown that their legs are gone. They're old. I'm sorry. I'm thankful for what they've done for us as a club. William has done us a great service. Pedro has done a great service for what the time, the little time that he's been with us, three or four seasons. But it's time for Hudson to do it, right? It's it, it's his time to shine. It's his moment to shine, guys. He's so refreshing. Even though his best side is on the left-hand side where he can cut inside, he's probably our best crosser on, on the ball. He's probably our best crosser on the ball. So, you know, hey, I'm all, I'm all for it, man. I'm all for it. We have so much potential, so much so much potential that I only put a list of, of a few players on here, right? Some players didn't even make the cut, like Kurt Zuma. I forgot about him. I just thought about him in mid-video. And... And yeah, so, you know, hey, what are you guys' thoughts about my list? 
I had to redo this video because somehow, some way, it, 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 the first video got deleted. I feel like this video is actually the best of of the of the two, right? So, guys, please like, share, subscribe. If you really like this video and you want to see me do more videos like this, please subscribe, guys. Absolutely, I enjoy the support. And guys, I will be live streaming on Sunday for our big game against Manchester United, which we will win. I'm very up upbeat about that. And look forward to my preview, match review, match review and preview, right? The match review will obviously come after the game. The match preview tomorrow. Guys, up the chills. And let's go get that that three get those three points to solidify ourselves in the top four. We is in our hands now. Once again, they bottled it. 3-1 Arsenal. <laughs>